In this video, what we're going to learn is how to move sources inside of scenes using a hotkey. And for the first time in a long while, I got pretty confused on how to manipulate the parameters to get what I wanted. But I have since figured it out, and in this video, we're going to move a source inside of a scene with a hotkey, and then I'm going to show you how to change the source layer with a hotkey so that the bottom layer moves to the top and vice versa every time you hit that key. I look forward to showing you if you're a DJ or if you're a live streamer who's looking to make some super cool animations, this one is going to be for you. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. This channel provides education on live streaming tools and techniques to give you the reward and recognition that you deserve. If you like what you hear, subscribe and click the bell for a new video notification every single week. Okay, let's dig into moving sources with hotkeys. Here we have Bad Luck Brian. I have a couple animations set up. I'm going to hit the Shift A key and we're going to zoom, go to the left and crop. We're going to squash it down and go back to the, the original layer. I'm going to show you how to do this, but I want to highlight the power of this thing because as I talk, I can move the key and it looks like it's moving to my voice. Do you see how powerful that could be in regards to DJs? Or what if you wanted to make Brian talk? Well, I could isolate his mouth and make that a transparent ping and make his mouth move as I talk. Anybody want to go cliff diving? <laughs> Or I could make his eyeballs move by making his eyeball areas green, making that transparent, and making the eyes move with a hotkey. So this gives you enormous power to make some really wicked animations for your live stream. Okay, let's dig into showing you how to set this up. Okay, let's create a new scene, and we'll hit the plus sign in the lower left-hand corner, and we'll name it Brian. We'll hit OK. Then we're going to add a image source to the Brian scene. So we'll hit the plus sign under sources, select images, and then I will name it Brian photo. And we'll hit OK. Now we select that photo. And I'll scroll down here and where's that photo? This is, these are all my funny photos. There it is. Hit open. And then we'll hit OK. OK, there he is. Now, most people get confused about this next part. You would think that you would add the filter to the source to move it around inside the scene, but in this case, you do not do that. Right click the scene and select filters, and this is how it's done. So hit the plus sign after adding that filter, and we're gonna select move source. So I'm gonna name it Brian one, and we'll hit okay. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I want to keep it simple so that you understand the concept. We'll only add two motions here. So we're going to hit the plus sign again for another filter and we will name it move source and we'll hit Brian two and hit okay. Awesome. Okay. Make sure that the Brian two filter is selected and let's take a look at these parameters. The general section has one called source. So uh, assuming that you have multiple sources, this is where you will select it. Being that we only have one source in this example, the pull down only shows Brian's photo, but you can add more sources and you can control multiple sources with this filter. So this gets real powerful real quick, as you can imagine. The start delay, in most cases, you're not gonna wanna make this anything because it will delay when you activate it with that hotkey. I don't know why you would wanna do that, but it does exist as a parameter. Like I said, Elixeldro doesn't miss a thing and there's gotta be a reason why he put that in there. If you know why, let me know. Custom duration uh, applies to the length of travel time from the one position to the next, okay? The longer that, that time takes, the more difficult it becomes to make an object dance to the beat or dance to your spoken word because it must travel that long distance. And if you're hitting the key like, it's going to be shorter than the milliseconds that you add and it's going to get all crunchy and funky. So if you plan on making these objects dance to music, to the beat or to your voice, I recommend that you choose a amount of 500 milliseconds or less. Okay. End delay. 
I believe this pertains to motion, GIFs, and, and movies. We'll get into that later. Easing is pretty much self-explanatory. It applies to making the motion smooth. So it starts slower, it then goes fast, and then ends slower again. That's what ease in and ease out means. I like to use ease in and out. It makes for a very nice smooth motion. Uh, it's like humanistic, it's not robotic, you know? And I use a sine wave as the easing function, which is sort of a controller that controls the speed as it moves using the easing function. So experiment with, with that at will and have fun with it. Uh, transform, okay, this is where things get interesting because now what we need to do is decide where to move Brian to after Brian 1 has been uh, shown. So we're gonna move this source to a location and I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to make them a little bit thinner as well just to show you that it is possible to not only move but to change the aspect of the of the photo and then I'm going to click get transform now I I want to warn you sometimes you hit this get transform and it doesn't grab the new location so you may have to hit it twice just want to let you know okay scrolling down we're going to go to visibility and order this doesn't really pertain to this example because we're not changing or shifting uh, the layers of the sources. We will get into that in just a moment. Actions is fairly important. You wanna check off the filter only enabled when moving. The start trigger choice pertains to how the motion starts, okay? We're gonna choose none, not started, automatic, use a hotkey or next move to start this move. If I click it and show all the different parameters, there's all kinds of crazy ones in here. One is enable when the eye icon in front of the filter is enabled. That's referring to the little eye here. So they're basically assuming that you're gonna be controlling the motion by seeing the filters, which is problematic and kind of weird and funky when you're trying to do a live stream, right? You don't wanna to have to go into the parameters and the filters and, and play with making the motion happen with digging into the filters. It's just too much complexity. Hotkeys are much, much better when actuating the motion, trust me. So in most cases, you're gonna to wanna to select none. That's the same thing for the stop trigger as well. Simultaneous move. I'm not totally sure what this means. I think it's got something to do with when you have multiple sources moving around, and I think that you need to select this in some way. If you know what it means, let me know. I'm not sure what it means, honestly. Next move. This pull down is asking you what you wanna move next. So uh, obviously I'm in filter Brian 2, so when I hit the hotkey again, I want it to move Brian 1. I hope that makes sense. Okay, we have one more parameter and it's called the next move on. It's a pull down and you have two choices. If hotkey is selected, that means that the motion will occur when you click the designated hotkey. If you select move end, what happens is when the animation reaches its end point, it goes to the designated next move selection, which in this case, we're in filter two. It's gonna to go to Brian one. So when Brian two reaches its end point, it will automatically begin to move to the designated point that Brian one has. So if we do this for both, if I go into Brian one and go down to the bottom and select move end for that one, and I hit the start button, this is the effect that is created. See that? It's like an animation that you create and it just keeps on going. I just wanna make sure that you understand that you have this capability when you select move end. But for this tutorial, we're going to select hotkey because hotkey is absolutely the best way to go in regards to designating motion during a live stream. Okay, now things are getting exciting. I'm gonna show you how to set up the hotkeys. It's really not that difficult. All you have to do is go into settings in the lower right hand corner and click hotkeys and you get this pretty intense list of weird stuff. Don't let it bum you out, it's really quite simple. All you have to really understand is that when you create a new scene and you create filters within that scene, all that stuff gets added to this hotkey list. So we've created a scene called Brian and inside that Brian, we have a Brian 1 filter and a Brian 2 filter. So I'm gonna go in here and click my cursor into the Brian 1 field and hit Shift Q for Brian 1 and Shift Q for Brian 2. Now it's purely up to your decision if you want to have a second hotkey for the second movement, Brian 2, or not. 
I'm going to add the same hotkey for both because every time I hit that hotkey, the motion occurs. So for DJs that want to create cool, awesome animations that move to the beat, this is probably what you're going to want to do. Let me show you what I'm talking about when I hit apply and OK. And I go back into the Brian scene now. When I hit shift Q, it begins to move back and forth to the two states that I created in the filters. Cut and dry and easy. Okay, let's talk about changing layer position with sources using a hotkey in Move Transition. This is a really cool uh, capability that this plugin has to offer. I've created a scene called Red Blue Squares. If I right click on it and go to Filters, you can see here that I've created two filters, each representing two individual color squares as sources, just so you can understand what's happening visually here. I've got a blue order and a red order. And the reason why I name them order is so that you understand we're, we're switching order here. So if I go into the blue order and I scroll down in the parameters, you'll notice that there is this visibility and order set of parameters. Visibility is set as no change. In other words, we're not gonna be hiding anything. It's gonna be just always viewable here so that you can see what's happening. The order will be relative, start relative, okay? And the difference of the position will be position one. I've done that for both the blue and the red filter here. So if you scroll down, you can see it here as well. Same stuff. If I go back to blue here and scroll down to the bottom, as before, I'm designating the other filter in the next move, right? So blue is set to red and red is set to blue and we're actuating with hotkey, all right? And if I hit close and we go into the settings button in the lower right hand corner and go to hotkeys, you'll see if I scroll down, you'll see the red blue square so uh, scene and the blue order filter and the red order filter is designated with a control plus Z. I'll hit okay with that and when I hit shift Z, you can see that it's shifting those two sources in regards to the layer order. It's pretty cool and it's a lot easier than show and hiding layers. So much easier, oh, so much easier. This is the third video in a series and if you're looking for a bit more simplistic approach to moving sources in your scenes, consider these videos right here. And in the near future, I will be developing a video that will help you understand how to move animations to the beat of your music. So if you're a DJ, that will become very valuable for you in the near future. Subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified. Best wishes to you, stay strong, keep fighting. I'm rooting for you and I'll see you over at the other videos. Best wishes.